السير A dynamic region of 10 Southeast Asian nations where social economic progress abounds as the community becomes more connected. Millions of migrant workers are moving across borders to seek better opportunities. In 2020, 7.1 million ASEAN skilled workers and those in elementary occupations migrated for work within the region. Significantly, half of this number are women looking for newer opportunities, overcoming any challenges in the hope of taking their families out of poverty and provide them a better future. Working in plantations, construction sites, factories, farmlands, fishing waters, households, and many other places, migrant workers in ASEAN provide significant contributions to the economy and society of destination countries along with the countries of origin. When done safely, with order and dignity, migration of ASEAN people to work provides better opportunities, decent work, professional and skills development, and opportunities for men and women in places where they may not get decent jobs in their communities. This is why labor migration continues to be the preferred option by many. Recognizing the importance of migrant workers and the responsibility to ensure a safer and fairer labor migration for all, ASEAN leaders signed the ASEAN Consensus on the Protection and Promotion of the Rights of Migrant Workers in November 2017. This manifests the strong will and commitment of the region to uphold the rights of migrant workers as well as the obligations of both countries of origin and destination. Health Organization tonight has now declared the outbreak a global health emergency. When the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 shook the world, it affected every single human being beyond the imaginable. Among those who were affected the most are the migrant workers, especially women, workers in informal and dangerous occupations whose vulnerable conditions became even more apparent amidst this global health, economic, and social crisis. Women migrant workers have been particularly at risk of increased violence, abuse, and exploitation. Cases of violence increased. Helplines received a volume of calls. Many women migrant workers found it more difficult to seek help and some also found themselves trapped at home and their workplace with perpetrators due to lockdowns and restrictions of movement. Living through the impact of this difficult time results in the desperation of many to get to work where it is available, regardless of its nature, cost of employment, and the means of getting there. At the helm of exploiting this situation are the illegal and unethical practices of recruitment agents, brokers, and sub-agents who are also making the situation doubly challenging for job seekers, especially in social media. These and more unlawful hiring methods seem to have mushroomed now more than ever. The commitment to promote and protect migrant workers like you from exploitation especially women and those in dangerous occupations, in ASEAN continues. Crucial to realizing that vision is ensuring all migrant workers, members of their families and communities, have access to relevant and updated information about the correct migration process, essential legal documents, and where to seek help if you experience violence, abuses, and exploitation. After all, Working abroad has never been easy, but knowing what is right from wrong is very empowering for every migrant worker and their left-behind family members 
in this long and oftentimes complex journey. Every journey begins with a dream. And the questions, why not? Maybe I can. <laughs> Many believe that in the land where opportunities await, there is a risk worth taking, no matter how far, how lonely, and uncertain. The journey to a better life, reminders for a safe migration experience with decent working conditions in ASEAN. Reminder 1. Inform and involve your family in your decision to work abroad. Working abroad is a big change not only to you, but also to your loved ones. It is important to discuss and decide as a family your plans and possible changes throughout the time that you will be apart from them. It is also important to be aware of the risks you may face and where to seek help once abroad. Your family has a role in this process. Plan together how your earnings from overseas work will be used. Write down your financial goals. Identify how much money should be sent back home each month and set aside money for savings and investments. Planning and saving smart today prepares you and your family for the future. Reminder 2. Make an informed decision. The decision to work abroad is the first part of every individual's migration story. Each step is equally important which is why proper orientation and guidance are a must. Based on the ASEAN consensus, it is your right as a migrant worker to know matters about your employment and employment-related conditions. All countries of origin conduct mandatory pre-departure orientations to educate and guide aspiring job seekers to make informed decisions. Specialized pre-employment and post-arrival or on-site education programs are also available in selected countries. In these orientations, you will get to know about the country and relevant labor laws related to hiring and selection requirements workers' documentation procedures, preparations before departure, new screening systems, health protocols, quarantine requirements, and etc. Modus operandi of illegal recruiters both in countries of origin and destination, the diverse culture of the countries of destination and work environment, occupational health and safety, adaptation to crisis situations, and other important reminders including your arrival procedure. Typically, these pre-employment, pre-departure, and post-arrival orientations would last for hours or days. Attendance at these specialized orientations is extremely important for migrant workers to have realistic expectations and an informed decision that leads to their preparedness and safety. Migrant Worker Resource Centers or MRCs found in ASEAN member states are places where job seekers can visit and get information about working in any ASEAN country. At these centers, Migrant workers like you can also seek advice and legal assistance in filing complaints when faced with recruitment or employment-related abuses and exploitation. If the MRC cannot assist an individual, such as in cases of violence against women migrant workers, they can refer the worker to other organizations that offer specialized help. If you have any questions, you may raise them during the orientation seminars 
or contact the relevant service providers such as your country's labor department, recruitment agency, CSOs or NGOs, and Migrant Worker Resource Center or MRCs either through their hotline, website, or Facebook page and other social media platforms. Other trusted sources of information about overseas work are the official websites and social media platforms of individual member states in ASEAN and other concerned groups such as civil society organizations or CSOs or NGOs. Your recruitment agency or direct employer should also give you more information about your employment abroad. Share with your family everything that you have learned from the pre-departure orientation seminar and other reliable sources of information about working in ASEAN. Then, as a family, decide together your plans in realizing that dream of a better life. Reminder 3. Protect yourself. Know about safe and fair migration. A safe and fair overseas work begins the moment a person is offered and has decided to apply for a job abroad. In ASEAN, individuals can apply to private recruitment agencies or PRAs. PRAs are allowed by the government to send qualified workers within the region and are also responsible for the welfare of the workers. People who live in hard-to-reach areas rely on sub-agents or neighbors, friends, family members, and even returning migrant workers in town to refer them to a labor recruiter. Be careful in any of your transactions. Finding employment in any ASEAN country has a process and there are always legal requirements that you need to comply with. What are these legal documents? Passport A passport is a little book that proves who you are, your age, and where you are from. Anyone can apply for a passport in your country of origin. With a passport, you are allowed to travel outside your country, and this confirms your right to protection while abroad. Confiscation of passports or any other identity documents is against your right as a migrant worker and international laws. Most employers would say that they would keep your passport for safekeeping, but most of them really keep them to prevent you from running away. If you find yourself in this situation, reach out to your embassy for proper guidance. Employment Contract A contract protects the rights of both the worker and the employer by documenting what has been agreed by both parties. Important details can be found in the contract, such as your name, your work address, your employer, your duties, salary, and benefits, working hours, not over 12 hours a day, including overtime, how overtime pay is calculated, weekly days off or rest days, including days off on national holidays, leave entitlements, any deductions that are to be made, and details about contract termination and dispute settlement. In some contracts, it includes information about your right to perform your religion, such as praying, not eating pork, drinking alcohol, and many others. For domestic workers, the contract should include key terms of employment, such as residential address of the worker, salary, rest day arrangements and accommodation, whether the worker lives in or lives out the house of the employer. Live-in arrangement means you as a worker live inside your employer's residence. Meanwhile, a live-out arrangement means you live outside the employer's residence. For a live-in setup, the contract should include details about your living condition in the household of the employer. The recruiter or employer should provide you with a copy of the contract to review before you sign anything. 
it should have a version written in your native language. If it is not, ask that it be translated for you with no additional cost. Remember that you have the right to ask for changes to the employment terms and or refuse to sign the contract. But what if a recruiter or employer promised to have a formal contract after arriving at the work site? Never agree to this false promise of having a formal contract upon your arrival at the work site. A government-approved employment contract is also a requirement for you to get a visa and a work permit. Without this, you are not allowed to enter and work in any country of destination. Visa A visa permits the person to enter into the country issuing the visa. It is attached or stamped in your passport. There are many types of visas. Most migrant workers receive a temporary visa that allows them to stay in the country for the time that they are employed. Some legal recruiters will offer you to enter a country on a tourist or visitor visa. Do not accept this offer. You will end up being an irregular or undocumented worker who is vulnerable to abuse. Meanwhile, in most countries of destination, migrant workers like you need to get a working visa including an entry visa and a labor permit prior to your departure. Without this, you may be deported upon arrival at your country of destination. Work Permit A work permit is your permission to work in the country of destination. This permit may be issued for a fee. Make sure to ask your labor recruiter who will bear the cost and how much will it be. A work permit can have several conditions relating to employment, such as migrant workers cannot change jobs or employers during their stay in the country of destination. A work permit can be renewed and has a validity of three months after two years in ASEAN. Medical Certificate Another important requirement to get a work permit abroad is passing the medical examinations done in the country of origin and destination. These health checks are done to confirm if an applicant is medically fit for the job and if a person is free from specific communicable and non-communicable diseases such as COVID-19, HIV AIDS, tuberculosis, hepatitis B, leprosy, and many others. All medical results need to be kept confidential unless it is a mandatory test and required to be shared as per law. In some countries of destination, women migrant workers are required to undergo regular medical examinations, which includes pregnancy tests. Your recruitment agent or direct employer should inform you of the medical screenings that will be conducted before leaving your country and after arriving at the country of destination. Failure to pass these examinations or if you will be found pregnant, you may not be given the job at all. If you are in the destination country already, your work permit may be disapproved or cancelled and you may be sent back home. Payment of Recruitment Cost in ASEAN the services of recruitment agencies and the preparation of legal documents will need a certain amount to be paid by the employer. In some situations, workers will be asked to pay for the costs incurred in the application. But the recruitment agencies are not allowed to deduct these costs from the salary of the worker. In some other countries, employers would first pay on behalf of the worker and deduct these costs from the salary of the worker. Some countries strictly do not allow such practices. In other countries that allow such practices, there are restrictions in place on the amount that agencies can charge for recruitment. Common in most countries, however, is the requirement to report the collection of recruitment costs to the government. Unauthorized payments to recruiters should be reported to the authorities. As a reminder, Always ask for a receipt in any transaction. 
whether payments or submission of legal documents to a labor recruiter. If a recruiter or agent refuses to issue a receipt or proper documentation, report immediately to the police authority. Labor Department, CSOs, or NGOs in your country to help you with your situation. Reminder 4. Secure your hard-earned money. There are many ways that you can send money back to your family. Often, the safest way is to send money via banks. Remittance centers are authorized online money transfers. You can talk to your labor recruiter or trusted person for advice on the best way. Before leaving for work abroad, make sure that details on money remittances are discussed with your family. Although it is your goal to bring a better life for your family back home, you must set aside some savings for your own expenses and for the future. Planning your return back home involves knowing how much savings you should have and to constantly put aside money for this goal. Reminder 5. Understand what to do when in crisis. Working in a foreign country is not without its risks. Most of the jobs in the informal sector are considered dirty, dangerous, and difficult. But being a regular migrant with complete documents will boost your protection against these risks. However, there are exploitative situations, whether documented or not, that you may encounter when working in other countries. Exploitation? What should you know about this? Exploitation is any situation in which an employer abuses their authority and harmfully uses a worker for their benefit. If your employer does not pay your salary or forces you to work longer hours without overtime pay, this is an indication of abuse or exploitation. The European Union and the International Labour Organization outlined eight signs of labour exploitation. Strong indicators, excessive working days or hours, medium indicators, bad living conditions, hazardous work, low or no salary, no respect of labor laws or contracts signed, no social protection such as health care, insurance, etc., very bad working conditions, and wage manipulation. When these abusive situations happen regularly and the employment contract is no longer followed by imposing a penalty or threat, a migrant worker could be in forced labor. The International Labor Organization has listed indicators of forced labor, abuse of vulnerability, deception, restriction of movement, isolation, physical and sexual violence, intimidation and threats, retention of identity documents, withholding of wages, debt bondage, abusive working and living conditions, and excessive overtime. Human trafficking is one of the most dangerous situations you can encounter as a migrant worker as it leads to extreme forms of exploitation. For women migrant workers, the risk is much greater. As a migrant worker in ASEAN, you have the right to file a complaint or make a representation under the law relating to your work such as termination of employment, breach of employment contract, and violation of your rights in the country of destination. Violence, forced labor, exploitation, and harassment 
are all punishable under national laws. So you can always seek redress if you face such a situation. If the conditions you are in degrade your dignity and pose a threat to your life and well-being, immediately ask for help from relevant service providers as well as your family who may also assist in handling your case from home. You may speak to the service providers via their official hotline, website, or by visiting their offices. In addition, some ASEAN countries have launched a system where migrant workers can register their complaints efficiently. When you decide to report and file a complaint, you will be generally required to present the following. Reminder 6. Know your helplines. Some migrant workers fear to ask for help while others are not aware that such basic rights and mechanisms are in place. But there are support systems or people to guide you while you work abroad. Who are these support systems? Your recruitment agencies or labor recruiters. Recruitment agencies have the responsibility to be the first ones to attend to non-emergency concerns of their deployed workers. They must fairly mediate to settle problems between the worker and the employer. The Embassy and the Labor Attaches In your country of destination, an embassy is an extension of the worker's country of origin. Consular officials and staff attend to consular services such as renewal of passports and processing of other official documents. Part of the diplomatic mission team is the labor attaché who attends to all employment and welfare-related concerns of their nationals, including migrant workers. However, if the labor attaché is not available in your embassy, you can discuss any complaints related to your living and working conditions with the consular officials. They can help you and refer you to specialized service providers. Migrant Workers Resource Centers or MRCs MRCs also give legal assistance to migrant workers who are seeking justice for abuses during recruitment and employment. They also provide services and outreach, especially to women migrant workers and communities. In cases of violence against women migrant workers, MRCs refer the individual to CSO partners and other government and non-government essential service providers which provide immediate specialized services. Those specialized service providers include health, police or justice, and psychosocial services. Trade Unions A trade union is an organization of workers who have joined together to achieve common goals, like better working conditions, just wages, and other employment-related policies. Based on international law, everyone is allowed to join a trade union. However, some countries in ASEAN restrict workers from joining or forming trade unions. Be sure to know the rules about this from your recruitment agency or during the pre-departure orientation. Civil Society Organizations or CSOs or NGOs A CSO is an organization that operates independently of a government. They all have different goals and aims. Some CSOs support migrants and their families, while others operate shelter homes for migrant workers, provide legal support, information, or assistance with repatriation. For women who may face violence, many CSOs provide essential and support services including legal aid and psychosocial support. Some also offer shelters and safe accommodation to women migrant workers who have experienced violence and who cannot return to their place of residence or workplace because the perpetrator lives in the same place. The shelter provides temporary accommodation for them while they access justice for their cases. Reminder 7. 
coming back prepared and ready to reintegrate. After completing your employment contract, returning and reintegrating to your home country is the final stage of your migration journey. If your goal for working abroad was not accomplished, you could consider going back again. Under Chapter 5, Article 26 of the ASEAN Consensus, countries of origin are responsible to develop a reintegration program for returned migrant workers and their families. Migrant workers in ASEAN return to their country of origin for several reasons. Finished contract, retirement, personal problems, loss of job, and a visa or work permit, serious health problems, deportations, among others. Regardless of the reasons for their return, the ASEAN member states have developed programs to facilitate the reintegration of workers. Reintegration includes social reintegration, economic or financial reintegration, and psychosocial reintegration. The countries of origin establish enhancement of skills and abilities. Vocation and entrepreneurial training of the returning migrant workers and their families. Efforts have also been made to provide skill certification, job placement, and livelihood options through reintegration programs to inspire more migrant workers to better prepare for their return. Saya ke Malaysia sih tujuannya kan mem memperbaiki perekonomian keluarga. Saya kan di perkebunan kelapa sawit. Kalau waktu kita pertama berangkat, syaratnya cuma paspor. Nanti kalau sudah sampai di sana, kita dibikin visa kerja itu selama satu tahun. Kalau itu habis, kita disamb baru sambung visa kerja lagi. Kalau pesan dari saya sih yang mereka mau ke luar negeri harus pakai dokumen yang lengkap. Soalnya di sana kan banyak yang nggak punya dokumen. Jadi kalau kalian nggak punya dokumen, kalau polis masuk itu kan mereka harus sembunyi, tidurnya tidak boleh di rumah. Karena kalau mereka ketangkap, mereka akan dipidanakan, dihukum penjara biasanya. Kalau tidak kembali, mungkin saya mengembangkan usaha peternakan ini sih. Jadi intinya mau di Indonesia saya berusaha mengembangkan peternakan. From migrant care, they make group of ex-migrant in village. We join together to build a organization of ex-migrant for Kuripan. We look for the potential of our village so we can make development of it to make a better life. Take care baby and clean everything. Very difficult. Itu anak-anak masih kecil, jadi apapun kami terima karena kami butuh. Saat itu belum punya rumah, jadi anak-anak masih kecil sudah beli rumah, finish dua tahun saya pulang. Kita dari awal 12 September 2014 kita dibentuk satu kelompok. Terus baru Mei dapat uh, pelatihan dari Dinas Pemberdayaan Perempuan Batik. Habis itu juga lainnya membuat seriping buat itu satu bulan kemudian dan untuk pemerintah sangat apa ya uh, promosi kita. Batiknya juga ini Batik Wonosobo setiap satu minggu ada satu hari yang pakai Batik Wonosobo. Itu karya pembatik Wonosobo. Pesan-pesan saya mau kerja di Singapura, satu harus legalnya, itu harus daftar yang resmi dari pemerintah agar kita mendapat perlindungan. Dua, kita mempunyai keterampilan, terutama keterampilan berbahasa, dari dan di mana-mana itu bahasa sangat penting. Yang ketiga harus mempelajari, apa ya namanya di sana, kebudayaan dan kebiasaan baik di sana. I went to Thailand and worked there as a foreign English teacher. And I went there as a tourist. Actually, there's a fear because um, for tourists, they will be staying there only for 30 days. Actually, I had a mixed emotion that my visa will be ended up very soon. I have to obtain that uh, non-immigrant visa, which is good for one year. Because if I cannot be able to get that visa, then I have to get out of the country. From those experience, ma'am, napansin ko na kailangan talaga ng isang migrant worker na magkaroon ng security. Though mahirap po talaga siyang makuha at the first place, especially entering as a tourist, but then they have to work very hard.
benefit that I was able to attain while working with there is that I don't have the fear of being questioned by the immigration police simply because I'm holding my non-immigrant visa. I was able to stay and work in Thailand for seven years. So, sabi ko sa sarili ko, meron naman na akong naging karanasan doon sa Thailand na pwede kong dalhin dito sa ating bansa. Kung ano man yung mga magandang nakita kong practices doon, pwede ko ding i-share dito sa ating bansa. May nakilala po ako, nabanggit po niya ang tungkol sa uh, programa ng OWA, which is that sa Pilipinas, ikaw ang mom at sir. Napaka-convenient po. Binibigay po nila sa akin yung mga instruction. Nabigyan din po kami ng option kung saan pwedeng magturo. I consider it is a success because I went there to gain more experience. Nang sa ganon, it is also a preparation in teaching here in my country. Working abroad is filled with challenges and opportunities. But with the right information and preparation, come better protection and empowerment for every migrant worker. Let your desired future for you and your loved ones be a reality. Make the most out of your journey here in ASEAN by choosing what is safe and fair for everyone.